I want to segue a bit. I know you have um, since left working with Puff and you've done some incredible things. Are there any deals? Because I look at you and I think that you can give a master's class on relationships. I think you can give a master's class on connecting the dots, being able to identify the opportunities. These are things that for somebody like myself, when I look at you, I'm like, this guy's just gifted in these areas. Are there any deals that you have architect or helped to put together or connected the dots that stand out for you? Because we've talked about several in this interview already. But these are just things I know of. Are there any for you that you sit back and look over the course of your career and just say, you know, I'm so happy to have been a, a, a dot connector or somebody who really helped to get this deal done? Um, you know what, John? Uh, this, this is going to seem, um, I, I don't want it to seem uh, uh, egotistical or anything like that, but all things that I have participated in, uh, big and small, uh, continue to uh, give me joy because I'm able to uh, look back even now and as I try to work on things um, to take a piece from something else we might have did before or something that we're doing now. Um, but I think the, the thing I'm most proud of is maintaining relationship up and down. Uh, you know, like, so I'm no different, like we talked about earlier, than anybody else in having a uh, bumps in the road. But it, it's the hardest to, to be able to maintain relationship um, when you're low, right? So, and, but the, most of the time is because of you. You know, you hit a bump and you fall lower than you were. That's what happens with a bump. It goes up and you go down. Um, and you get to the point where you don't want to do what you normally did or you don't want to have the hustle or you may be embarrassed or afraid. Acknowledge it, deal with it, and move forward with the situation um, that is important. So, you know, it, uh, the thing that uh, I'm most happy about is still having a relationship with you, still having a relationship with Magic Johnson, still having a relationship with Ron Burkle, still having a relationship with Puff, and still having a relationship with people that I only manage for two or three months because we may not have the, you know, the same relationship. I was literally driving down the street today and a song, uh, uh, one of Biggie's songs came on uh, that featured the Junior Mafia. And I remember that, you know, I managed Little Kim for six months, you know, but um, even though like we didn't have the massive success that uh, I had with a puff or I had with, uh, you know, different artists, um, it was important to me that I still um, was a, a, a part of seeing Little Kim um, in a different way. Like what I saw in Kim wasn't just the music. Right to this day, um, it was impressive to me that she maintained a relationship through her own hardships with um, Donatella Versace, with, um, you know, those people in fashion, um, uh, Mark Jacobs, for instance. Like when she was in prison, Mark Jacobs, she showed me letters that he wrote her. And, you know, so I always, when I uh, tried to work with her to manage her, it was about getting her outside of even always worrying about new music and what people thought, you know, you have something that has made this fashion industry pay attention to you. Um, if we can figure that out, you're back on your road. I'm, I'm working with another client that right now that I can't uh, disclose, but you know, that person had a bump and uh, you know, it's easy for me because I've had many bumps and come out of it, make uh, drop me one, babe. Um, and I'm able to, um, really honestly be able to say, you can get over this. It, you're going to be cool because I've done it with several clients. I've done it several times in my life. And the gifts that come out of stuff are way bigger than the what you get from waddling in it. So it's more important to me that I still can pick up the phone and call uh, uh, those people that I even had bumped with because you don't never know what you got to plug in the next deal. 
You don't know what dot you gotta uh, connect, and you, you your relationships are that glue. So I know without a shadow of a doubt, man, that um, God has gifted me with a platinum Rolodex. Yes, He has. Yes, He has. Uh, and, for anybody and like I said, if you hit a bump, you know, today as I sit here talking to you, man, in a beautiful, uh, you know, sunlit California kitchen. Um, it is still some bumps that I'm thinking about, like, yo, how, you know, can I, can I fix that one or make that one better? Because I don't want to leave here. I, you're not going to make everybody happy, but I don't want to leave here not identifying uh, any varnishes in that platinum roller deck that I can't polish off. You got to keep on. You got to, no matter how bad you think it is, you got to keep on. No, you, you really do. You know, it doesn't matter. And this is something that I hope our audience pay attention to. You keep stressing that point of you got to keep on. It doesn't matter what yesterday bought you. It really doesn't. Yesterday is yesterday. And every day that you wake up, you have to look at it as God has blessed me with a blank slate. Another day. It's, it's, it's clean. What I make of today becomes my new reality for tomorrow. And if people can- Yo, just, you better talk that talk, brother. That is the, one of the realest things that I've heard um, in a while. In a while. Every day is, is an opportunity for you to make uh, tomorrow's history. And uh, it's funny that you're saying that, right? Because 20 years ago, um, no, longer than that. 30 years ago, um, Lior Cohen used to always uh, pour into us like, yo, tomorrow you can write your last chapter. <laughs> you know, like, you know, don't let this be your last chapter. Tomorrow you can write it. You know, like you, his, his, his uh, teaching to us was like, yo, just we got to get up tomorrow and do it. You know, we got to get up tomorrow and make it happen. And, you know, uh, he continues, you know, himself to do it, to reinvent himself from Def Jam to Warner to his, you know, 300 Entertainment to, uh, you know. Now, being YouTube. over at YouTube. Yeah, you know, and those of us who learned under the Def Jam days, we may have been successful. And um, I, this is an important point because we, we have mentioned the word success um, a lot of times. And when I talk about how good God has been to us, Prez, me and you, not only have I accomplished my dreams and my goals, God showed me and you that he given us things that we didn't even know to dream of. Them first days on, on uh, Manhattan Avenue and 121st with Dougie Fresh, 124th, I'm sorry, with Dougie Fresh, nigga. I had never even heard of Miami. Never mind going to the south of France 10 or 12 times. Never mind uh, partying in Ibiza and all of those things that we were blessed to be able to do. And people forget this part because of the relationship with Puff or LA or Magic or whoever that you worked your way up to get. We've done things that we didn't know to dream of doing. And I'm still happy with spending two weeks in Miami as my vacation. I don't have to never go to another country again because he filled my cup that full with uh, blessings and being able to show you that if you trust in me, I will give you everything. And he's taught me some lessons sometimes that, you know, it ain't the girl that's next to me. It ain't the person or the client that I'm working for. It's me, Phil. And you'll have that no matter where you go. And I've continued to have it, although I uh, and continue to be grateful to um, those who have given me the opportunity, the um, L.A. Reeves, the Steve Bartles. Like, you know, I worked at Def Jam and Steve Bartles was like the uh, president in L.A. was the CEO or something like that. But my relationship with Bartles goes back to when you say you were the tour manager. I didn't even know to go do radio shows until Steve Bartles saw something in me and said, hey, Phil, you got Puff. He's the hottest thing on radio right now. And 
yo, there's radio stations that will have him for Summer Jam if you want me to, uh, you know, help you with that. Absolutely. Ain't changing nothing I'm doing. So it wasn't just about him being my boss at Def Jam. I have uh, 10 years of, of history prior to Def Jam with him just for showing me how to take advantage of another opportunity. So when I got to Def Jam, he knew I would be solid. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.